It's the fall of 1981. The phone rings in my little house in North Portland, and it's a colleague calling to offer me a job. He asked me, do you think you could sculpt trees? Do you think you could build trees? And I'm like, absolutely, yes. He said, well, do you know anything about trees? And I'm thinking, no, but I say, yes, I know everything about trees. Oregon's covered with them. <laughs> Six weeks later, I was on a plane to New York City. I was scared out of my wits. And all I know is I love trees. That began a fabulous journey of my creative self-expression, learning how to sculpt, learning from life how to sculpt trees. I love trees and everything about them. I love their shapes and their forms and all the magic and the power and the wisdom that they represent. Trees can represent so many things to us. They're a powerful symbol of life. We all know something about the notion of the tree of life, and we also all are part of a family tree. Trees connect the realms of the earth to the realm of the sky. Writers, poets, shaman, children, dreamers, leaders have all been inspired by trees and have turned to trees as a source of strength. Scientists have studied all the different processes of trees and have learned about really complex systems like photosynthesis and carbon storage. This is a very important point in our times. Carbon sequestration, we don't even really understand what trees are providing for us. And also as a model for uh, the collection of and distribution of material. I love all these different aspects of trees and the beauty of the patterns of how they branch. The big, large boughs divide and become limbs, and those limbs divide and become branches, and those branches divide and become branchlets, and then twigs, and they adjust themselves so they can hold thousands and thousands of leaves all turning to the sun to collect energy. And no matter how many trees there are or how large the forests are, there's always enough space and there's always enough light to go around. Roots also tell a, a gripping story. The root systems of trees just dig into the earth looking for nutrition and creating balance so they can grow up and to these massive, beautiful structures. And these, the roots go down into the earth. They take up all this decomposed material, turn it into energy and collect moisture while they're breaking down rocks into soil. And scientists have recently, you know, been all over the fact that Trees talk to each other. Trees talk to each other through their root systems. So unbeknownst to us, all this time, trees are speaking to each other. They can teach us a lot about communication, about sharing, about networking, about protecting and helping each other to ward off disease. This is the wonderful world of trees that I live in when I'm doing my sculptures. And no matter whether I'm building a tropical rainforest as a immersion habitat for endangered species or a meditative retreat in an oncology hospital or a beautiful chandelier in a wine cellar, trees are my inspiration when I'm sculpting. A lot of people might ask me, well, how do you do that? How do you, how do you make trees? And I guess um, I start by looking for what I call the essence of a tree. What really 
tells you something is a tree or a root system. I spend a lot of time in the woods. I walk in the forest. I sit with trees and I touch trees. I photograph trees everywhere I go. And I collect all the parts of trees and they just sort of people my world so that I can just look at them and hopefully absorb all their beauty and what they're all about. So if I was saying, what is, what is the essence of a root structure, of a root mass? Is it massive and a sprawling footprint that digs into the earth or is it a mostly unseen structure? Is it this networked frame system, interlocking system? And I might try to put that in a sculpture. Roots can be gnarly or contorted or hair-like and fine. And I try to put that in a sculpture. Or what is the essence of an oak? I mean, can you see the fortitude in this tree, the sturdiness and how it grows? I mean, Oak trees can send these massive boughs out, you know, 60 feet in any one direction, and then carry tonnage of leaves at the ends of these massive boughs. I mean, that is the most complex living system you can imagine. That tissue, the living tissue in a tree, can carry all that weight and not fail. I mean, we cannot build something like that. If we cantilever some structure out that far, you know, gravity would overcome that. So, I mean, this is all of the fabulous nature of what is an oak, and I try to put that in a sculpture. Or what is a Tory's pine? What is the extreme nature of this tree that can hang, have balance and hang out over the edge of the world with these windswept branches that draw ecstatic lines in space? and I try to put that in a sculpture. I move through these landscapes quietly, making sketches and drawings, and that uh, visual conversation eventually will turn into a 3D model. Even for this installation here today, for what you see around you, I built a model. Models are a bridge between an, the idea world and the built world. We can ask and answer all kinds of questions like, how do people interact with this space? How, do, how does it fill the space? Is it enough? And how does it look from different perspectives? And with the model as a guide, this is what I consider to be basically the crux of the creative process. Now that I have, know the nature of the tree that I want to build, and with the model as a guide, this is where creativity happens. Because on the one hand, you have this idea waiting to be expressed. And on the other hand, you have this pile of raw materials. So I, I consider it to be alchemy. Basically, you take these disparate materials, uh, metal tubing, construction and building materials, um, epoxy, urethane, foam, paint, and with them you breathe life into a fabulous sculpture that connects us to the profound majesty of trees. And so it begins. With the model as a guide, we build a durable, metal armature. We spray that with urethane foam. Then I carve that foam and like release these beautiful sensuous forms, coat the entire thing with epoxy re resin for structural integrity. And in the case of chandeliers, wire on LED lights. Then I sculpt epoxy resin over the whole thing and emboss with bark patterns, and then paint and tint the whole sculpture. Once you've got this all ready and you take it where it's going to be, the installation commences, you put all the pieces together, check to see that the sculpture is doing everything you wanted it to do in situ that it was doing in that model. 
And then in the case of chandeliers, we hang crystals on each and every bough, branch, root, or twig. And then what happens? Then what happens? We turn on the lights. Spaces are transformed. Shadows are cast where they've never been before. We are delighted by patterns of light and color that dance all over the walls, floors, ceilings, and mirrors. We are transfixed by what happens with color. There's unexpected color that delights us and li as light reaches into every corner of a space. Even a sunrise or a sunset can add to the wonder and the magic that has just occurred by installing these beautiful sculptures. Trees remind us that magic is everywhere and trees can teach us how to learn to stay connected to nature while we reach out and remain grounded in the world around us. We reach up for light, meaning, and magic. Thank you. <laughs>